What's up guys, JQ here with Tech Creation, and I have with me today the 64 gigabyte rose gold iPhone 6S. Let's begin. Okay, so the iPhone 6S this time around is more than just a software update and a better camera. It's actually a substantial one. Apple introduced a display technology that they call 3D Touch, which in my opinion, it's a pretty big deal. In addition, both the 6S and the 6S Plus both come with two gigabytes of RAM and finally 4K video recording with the all new 12 megapixel camera, which from an earshot, it won't impress most Android users but nonetheless, it's here and that's a good thing. And as you can tell by the title of this video, I have the 64 gigabyte rose gold edition, which is just a cool way of saying pink. Nah, but in all seriousness, it really depends on how the light hits the phone. It also comes in gold, silver, and gray, and in 16 gigabyte configurations for the base model and 128 gigabyte configurations for the top model. And for whatever reason, they skipped 32 gigabytes altogether. I'm not sure why. It also ships with Apple's latest software, iOS 9, which offers some key features that I'll get into in a moment. Apple listened to the complaints of the iPhone bending in people's pockets and included 7000 series aluminum this time around, simply meaning that it's just gonna take a lot more than putting it in your pocket to bend this phone. And as you can imagine from that build, yes, it's heavy. In fact, it feels heavier than my Note 5, but it weighs less. And because I'm coming from the Note 5, the iPhone feels a bit small for my taste and is just as slippery as the Note 5 as well. So you might wanna put a case on it. So the design remains the same for the most part. Your volume button's on the left, just below your silencer, your power button on the right, and finally your home button with the Touch ID fingerprint scanner that's responsive as always and the fastest that I've personally ever tested. The unsightly antennas still remain, and I think it would have been cool to see the rose gold color continue along the front. The white seems to be a bit jarring, and it sort of throws off the whole scheme of it. But good thing you always have options to cover it up. Up front is a five megapixel camera that captures 720p video, and the rear camera, as I mentioned before, that captures 12 megapixel photos and 4K video. But before I get into that, I just want to mention that the screen is just above 720p and it doesn't do justice when viewing photos and videos that were taken on the device. It's only until you view it on your computer where you're like, wow. But more on that in a second. Since we're on the display, let's talk about the main feature, 3D Touch. The 3D Touch sort of mimics the right click button that you see on a mouse. It works with sensors that are embedded in the display itself. So in addition to tapping the screen by applying pressure, you'll get a haptic feedback and you can access actions within a particular app itself. In messages, for instance, you can compose a text from the home screen or you can access your email inbox or jump to a particular camera mode directly. And it's not limited to the home screen though. It works inside apps also. So with a light press, you can preview email attachments, preview photos, links, etc. And with a deep press, you can pop right into the content itself. Apple calls this feature peak and pop. And it reminds me of the MacBook's trackpad if you're familiar with that. One notable feature with the 3D Touch is in the keyboard. With a deep press, it brings up a cursor to navigate between characters, offering you some fine precision when editing text. But to no surprise, it only works on the Apple keyboard and currently third-party keyboards are not supported. You can also switch applications by pressing the edge of the screen and swiping over to your right. It's certainly not intuitive, it doesn't feel natural, and it takes some getting used to. I'd rather just double press the home button. 
Also with 3D Touch, you can interact with the all new live wallpapers from the lock screen with a deep press. There's really no use for this other than providing beautiful visuals and perhaps a conversation starter. This also works with live photos, which I'll discuss in a minute. As far as performance, we know that iOS has always been smooth. That's just the way the software was written. But now with two gigabytes of RAM in iOS 9, you can't really ask for more fluidity in a smartphone. And I'd be lying if I said the UI isn't polished and smooth because it is. Games run just fine. The graphics look amazing. And I haven't experienced any hiccups. And the same goes for video playback. Content looks surprisingly good on this small screen. So with iOS 9, you have a new notes app and a revamp of maps. The new notes app is basically like Google Keep for Android. If you're familiar with that, you can add checklists, images, links. You can even draw on the notes and it syncs up with iCloud across all your Apple devices. Now with maps, you now have integrated public transportation. And when searching for directions, it provides you ETAs and directions for nearby transit routes but it's currently only supported in select metro areas like New York, DC, Canada, and Baltimore, just to name a few. We've seen this in Google Maps for quite some time now, so it's good to see it finally come to Apple Maps. Apple is really playing catch up and it's all healthy for competition. Now, one of the coolest features is live photos, but it can also be a gimmick. Live photos is where it captures a second and a half of video before and after it actually captures the photo. So it's essentially not a photo, but a video instead. And the way it works is that live photos is always recording. And when you decide to capture the photo, it saves that one second before you hit the capture button and one second after. And I personally don't see any use for this. I guess it can be useful if you don't wanna miss out on the perfect shot. But if you share with other devices like Android, is just going to be saved as a JPEG. So it's only iPhone exclusive. Another feature I'm surprised no one else has thought of yet is the simulated front facing flash. When you take a selfie, the screen lights up with it, giving you that extra light needed for indoor or low light scenarios, but it doesn't really do justice. The photos still don't look that great at all. You know, a bad camera is a bad camera and it just emphasizes it even more. Now that I've segued into photos, let's talk about image and video quality. Now I won't talk too much because pictures speak a thousand words. So I'll have you take a look for yourself. All right guys, here's the front facing 720p camera. All right guys, this is the front facing camera at nighttime. So it's safe to say that the majority of these photos are very, very impressive and probably on par with the Galaxy Note 5 and the LG G4. As I mentioned, it, the screen just doesn't do justice. So if you're taking pictures and they don't look as great, go ahead and view it on a much higher resolution display and I promise you won't regret it. I'm not gonna get into any jargon like dynamic range and color saturation because that's all photography talk. And if you're serious about photography, I wouldn't use a smartphone anyways. But I will say with confidence that this camera is definitely amongst the best of the crowd. And I think it'll be a great pickup if you already have Apple products around. This is the best phone you can get for obvious reasons. Now, all right, so now as far as the battery, I've had this phone for a little under a week for a couple of days, but from my usage, the battery has been pretty good. It's gotten me through a day with no problem, but I'm a special case. I, I'm a very, very heavy user and I do a lot of things, so it doesn't last as long as my Note 5, of course, because that's much more of a powerhouse, but I think it's pretty good for the average user out there. And one thing I wanna mention, if you're gonna take 4K video, expect your battery to die very fast because if you're going to abuse it, your battery would die. If not, you're gonna be just fine. Then again, there's nothing worse than the Galaxy S6. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to show some love to that like button down below. I'll leave more detailed specs in the description for anyone who might be interested. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so for new material every week. And I want to thank you all for being great. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.